if the number of workers is down and the number of and the and the and the the wage gains relative to inflation haven't kept pace, how are people still spending? And I don't know if you've been to lunch lately, but it seems to cost a hell of a lot more than it did two years ago. Mm. I don't know. I, I, I so that's that's the question that's haunting me right now is how, how is this resilience happening? U.S. lenders are holding on to substantial cash reserves as insurance against the slowing economy, ongoing deposit outflows, and impending stricter liquidity regulations that could have a significant impact, especially on mid-sized banks. This accumulation of cash represents another instance of a risk-averse approach from a sector that is still trying to regain stability following a series of bank failures in the spring. One such failure resulted in constrained lending after Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank collapsed in March, leading to massive deposit withdrawals and renewed scrutiny of the financial health of lenders. More recently, the sector faced further challenges with credit rating downgrades from both SanP and Moody's. Overall, U.S. banks held $3.26 trillion in cash assets as of August 23rd, a 5.4% increase from the end of 2022. While this amount is well above pre-pandemic levels, it has decreased since the weeks immediately following the March bank failures, as reported by Federal Reserve data. The Federal Reserve's aggressive tightening policies since March 2022 have put many banks in a precarious position with their longer-term securities, causing anxiety among investors about the health of bank balance sheets. Mark Yusko, in a video commentary, explores the factors contributing to the banking crisis, suggesting that we may be heading toward another round of crashes given the current outlook. Please take a moment to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to drop your comment and observations in the comment section below. Thanks and enjoy the video. Bankruptcies are bad. There's no way to spin them positively. There's no way to say, oh, it's, it's, it's not really a big deal. Look, every single one of us knows someone whose kid or friend has been laid off. Mm. Right? There's 650,000 tech workers who've been laid off. There are now hundreds of companies that are folding. Look, bankruptcy is not something you do lightly. It's like forever. I mean, there, yeah. are, there are reorganizations, but, but true bankruptcy, chapter 11 bankruptcies, liquidations, they are not, you don't come back. And so this idea that somehow it's a good thing. Now, I will argue, Mark, you will say all the time that you have to cleanse, right? You have to let the good companies die. I actually do agree with that. I mean, I, and I'm, I'll stand by that. That one of the challenges of the ZERP world, the zero interest rate policy world, was we didn't let companies die, right? We just extended and pretended. You know, oh, you, you owe me money, but you can't pay. Eh, it's low interest. Just, just extend. And in a high interest rate world, can't do that anymore. Because no. now they can't even pay the interest. There's some crazy stat. I'm going to get this approximately right. But it's like a third to maybe 40%. I think it's like 38% of the S&P 1500, which is you know the, the 1500 biggest companies, not just the 500, can't service their debt. Not only could they never pay the debt back, which... That's an endemic problem. We've got governments all around the world. People, individuals can't ever pay their debt back. But they could service the debt by and large. You pay the interest. 38% of the companies can't even service the debt. They can't even pay the interest. And now with the interest rates rising, that's why you're seeing the rise in, in bankruptcy. So uh, I do think bankruptcy is a good deal. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a big deal. And I don't think there's any way to positively spin it, uh, which I think some people are trying to do. Silicon Valley Bank was the largest bankruptcy, I think, this century, right, in terms mm. of, of banks. So now it wasn't an investment bank, and, and um, you know, people don't think of it as, 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 as important because it wasn't at the root of the slicing and dicing that was going on in, in the subprime market. But, you know, when, when your major banks, which are the bedrock of any, you know, well-functioning society, uh, crumble, that's, that's bad. That is a credit event. And there are a whole bunch of other 
things happening below the surface that don't get the same amount of press. Plenty of community banks struggling, um, not just with their mortgage, I mean, not just with their treasury holdings, but now with their commercial real estate holdings. Somebody just said they're going to renegotiate all of their leases. Yeah. It's like, we can't pay. And so we have to renegotiate. And I, well, and, and, you know, our boy Elon said, oh, I'm just not going to pay. I'm just, I'm just not going to pay my rent, which I don't know if that actually happened or if that was just, you know, to get publicity because that's what he does. He takes whatever's hot that morning and he, and he tweets about it. So, but I do, I do think that, look, there are, thousands, I mean, probably hundreds of thousands of commercial properties that are totally upside down. Cannot be refinanced, right? Impossible. The cash flows foot at, at current interest rates. And the only hope they have is that the banks extend and don't foreclose. Kind of like what if you had a good friend in banking during global financial crisis, you could, you could make that happen. So Bill Ackman and, and a few others had that happen. But, but you know, most of us don't have friends in, in high places. <laughs> the U.S. stock market saw modest gains on Friday, buoyed by the resilience of the national economy. Investors, however, remained cautious as they awaited key U.S. inflation data expected to be released next week. The Dow Jones index increased by 0.22%, while the tech-heavy Nasdaq added 0.09%. The S&P 500 index also posted gains of 0.14% but the small cap 2000 index experienced a 0.23% decline. Discussing the global market, particularly the U.S. stock market, Quincy Crosby, chief global strategist at LPL Financial in Charlotte, North Carolina, noted that the dollar had strengthened due to stronger U.S. economic data. This development raised the possibility of another interest rate hike by the Federal Reserve before the end of the year. Rate Stocks, quote-unquote, are flirting with all-time highs. No, they're not. You're pricing them in dollars. Price them in gold, price them in Bitcoin. They're down a lot, right? And, you know, stocks say the same price they were in 1997 priced in gold. That psychologically, we think today's prices are normal. But parking, right? I, I took a day trip to New York yesterday. Parking for the day is double what it was 10 years ago. Now, Say, but but that's normal. That's what's supposed to happen. It's not. What it, the parking is the same function. It's the exact same function. My car sat in this covered garage for the same amount of time, but I paid twice as much money. I didn't get any more benefit. The money got worse. And where was I? I was in. Uh, oh, I was in Chicago for the for the football game, mm -hmm. and parking there thirty dollars a day at Midway. Right? Not $20 a day like it is here, $30 a day. Now, if you went to O'Hare, it's like $72 a day. Think about that for one second. $72 to park your car for 24 hours. That's more than almost three days of minimum wage after tax. That's, that's a crazy number. Yeah. So, And so I, I get it that humans don't, don't think in gold terms, they think in dollar terms. And, you know, NVIDIA is, is $400 or whatever, $470. They don't think, hmm, selling it 40 times revenues, really, 40 times, four zero times revenue. And look, I, I, I'm wrong, right? I said it wouldn't go above 429 and it got up over $500. And I have this friend, Rob, who was a former hedge fund guy. Um, now he just manages his own money. He's one of the smartest tech investors I know. And he's old like me, so he's been through the cycles. Like there was, there was some, and I, I shouldn't pick on him, he's a young guy who was saying, you know, this is worse than Cisco. Well, you actually, you weren't there during the Cisco period and it's okay. That's not, that's not a criticism. But you actually didn't do the work. And Rob said, I, I challenge you to a, a podcast, you know, head on head. And, and Rob eviscerated him very nicely, right? I mean, he, he sliced him and diced him, but he did it in a very nice way because Rob's a very nice guy. And I came away 
uh, okay, okay, it's it's possible that Nvidia could do better than I thought in terms of sales because people are actually migrating from CPUs to GPUs, even though theoretically there's some functions that that doesn't work for. But but okay, but the multiple's still wrong. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah I know, right. but 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 it's a different diff, different world. And that's your point. It's the financialization issue. And look, there's a reason that every piece of legislation, right? Like like tax relief, right? Why did we give big corporations tax relief? Why didn't we give individuals tax relief? Central banks have been steadily increasing interest rates in response to sustained inflation in recent months. In July, the Federal Reserve raised its key interest rate to as much as 5.5% marking the highest level in 20 years. This was a significant shift from the near-zero rates observed just a few months earlier in February 2022. However, the pace of rate increases has slowed this year, as abrupt changes can be detrimental to banks, especially within the context of the U-shaped movement in rates since the global financial crisis of 2007 to 2009. Raising interest rates reduces the value of banks' assets, raises their borrowing costs, limits profitability, and generally increases their vulnerability to adverse events. During the first half of 2023, banks had to contend with low loan growth and high deposit costs, driven in part by customers withdrawing their funds to seek higher interest rates elsewhere, such as money market funds. This compelled banks to borrow more from the Federal Reserve at significantly higher rates than before, contributing to the banking challenges seen in the spring. Furthermore, ratings agencies like Fitch added to the pressure by downgrading their ratings of U.S. government debt in early August. Such sovereign downgrades can reflect broader economic issues potentially destabilizing banks by diminishing their creditworthiness and making it more difficult for them to secure funding from both markets and the Federal Reserve. For more Daily Dose crypto news, check out these two awesome videos on your screen. Click now and we will see you on the next video.